All right, now, what's up, world? We're going to go over Rachel's house, you know what I'm saying? I stopped over there, you know what I'm saying, just now. And it sounds like she warming up for a good uh, sermon, you know what I'm saying? So I'm going to go over Rachel Photon house, you know what I'm saying? That's one of my genies, you know what I'm saying? My wishes, you know what I'm saying? Not witch, but wishes. You know what I'm saying? T.D. Jakes called my tarot card readers. He called them witches. You know what I'm saying? He say, since when did we start listening to witches? And since when did we start listening to your ass, false prophets and, and warlocks and stuff? Shit. Y'all worse than the witches murdering Jesus and then trying to act like you're going to get a surprise for it. You know what I'm saying? But uh, let me go to Rachel, you know what I'm saying? Because Rachel, she got some good words. I'm going to mix it in with her, though. What's up, what's up, what's up, guys? I am Rachel Photon. Welcome, welcome back. I'm so happy to be here with you all today. Thanks for stopping by. This is going to be a What the F is Going On read, where we find out what the F is going on in your situation, get some possible outcomes and some wisdom to help you make. The best out of your situation. All right, take what resonates, leave what doesn't. Not everything may resonate with you. With that being said, lay do it. Alright, alright, alright guys, thank you all for stopping by, I'm so happy to be here with you all today. I hope y'all have been doing amazing, I have been doing amazing as usual. If this read resonates with you, I would love to hear from you down in the comments, and or hit that like button, it is very much appreciated. If you enjoy the way that I read, you may benefit tremendously from subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever I post new reads, all right, y'all? I am reading for billions of people on this planet, so take what resonates, leave what doesn't. Not everything may resonate with you. With that being said, y'all, lay do it. Let's see. What the F is going on, or what does the universe want me to illuminate to you? All right, so for some of you guys, this is crazy. <laughs> this is real crazy. All right, for some of you guys, someone was trying to um make you lose your magic somehow. Okay, you could have been dealing with a very difficult uh, situation or group of people. All right, that you may have to have um, lessened yourself in or not shown as much as your, uh, of your magical side as you normally would. All right, for some of you guys, someone um, does not like the fact that you are a, if you are a shaman, someone doesn't like that. If you have magical abilities, psychic abilities, you're a prophet, etc., someone definitely does not like that. For some of you guys, there's somebody who you were dealing with who feels as though um, they may never get you back, okay, or they don't know how to re-spark something with you guys. All right, um, they feel like a lot of people want you, a lot of people are attracted to you, and they just don't know how to stand out in front of those people. For some of you guys, you definitely broke a spell of some sort that someone had tried to um, throw onto you or you blocked a spell, okay? Um, I feel like for some of you guys, someone had you in a situation, they were like lying or putting up a facade and you were able to see through the facade that they were putting up or the lies maybe they were trying to make themselves seem better than they are okay i sense this could be the type of person who likes to play victim a lot yeah this is the type of person that um likes to throw stones and hide their hand and then cry when you throw the stones back at them wow 
I feel like for some of you guys, you may be worried that a relationship or a situation may not work out as you want it to, uh, possibly because of something that um, went on between the situation. I feel like you're thinking a lot about this, however. For some of you guys, you could be nervous because maybe you are around uh, a certain group of people or a situation where you kind of had to um, uh, blend in, so to say, and you're wondering if you uh, will be able to get back to your normal life, normal uh, way of living without any issues or without that energy from those people rubbing off on you. Uh, don't worry. I feel like everything's going to be just fine. In fact, you may feel even more empowered, even more power than ever before. Possibly because um, I feel like for some of you guys, you had to humble yourself in that situation. And essentially, it was a test from the universe or from God for you to see if you would humble yourself in that situation. To see what you had learned over time. Okay? And um, you definitely learned a valuable lesson. You applied what you had learned and you overcame whatever this test was very successfully. So please do not um, worry. Do not stress yourself. Okay? There's definitely someone here, however, that you're thinking a lot about. I feel like you could have wanted something to go a certain way with someone, but it didn't go the way that you expected it to. No, it's not really that... Uh, uh... I wanted it to go a certain way with somebody, but it didn't go that way, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't really that, you know what I'm saying? You know, the Bible lets you know that I knew the whole time. You, When you read the Bible, you see that God knew the whole time everything that is being done and all that. You know what I'm saying? All them lies that they told on God in Isaiah 53, you know what I'm saying? That he had something to do with Jesus dying and stuff and them hanging Jesus on the cross, them murdering Jesus, had God, uh, God had something to do with it and stuff like that. You know, God didn't have nothing to do with that. God didn't strike Jesus and God didn't say, with each strike they healed and God damn sure didn't say it pleased him to bruise Jesus when God simply showed you in, in the gospels when Jesus told a parable about the man who who left his land with with husbandmen and he sent you and went off to a far country then he sent uh, some of his uh, servants to get some of the profit, some of the uh, some of the uh, harvest, and they killed some, and they beat some, you know what I'm saying? Then he said, well, I'll send my own son, you know what I'm saying? I know they'll reverence my son. That's what he said. I know they'll reverence my son. Mm-hmm. And did they reverence Jesus? Answer that question. Did they reverence Jesus? Or did they murder Jesus? Did they reverence him? Or did they murder him? Now they run around on stage. Jesus this. Jesus that. Jesus this. But then they murdered him. And they looking for a reward from somebody they murdered. And they bragging on his murder, how they murdered him, and lying on God saying, each strike you heal, saying they know that God said that. Man, God wasn't for no ungodly judging and accusing ass devil. You know what I'm saying? God do show mercy. He do show grace. He do, you know, forgive. That's the people that put the effort to do the work of showing mercy, being graceful, and forgiving others. That's the work of God. Being God is being love. God is love. That's what God do. When you make love, you make God. 
God is love. Making love. Making gods. You know what I'm saying? People act like they don't understand English. You know what I'm saying? Act like you got to get it from another source. T.D. Jakes, you know what I'm saying? I thought T.D. Jakes was pretty cool dude at one time. Then when I got on the scene and he heard my music and stuff, then he gonna sabotage me. Then, you know, around that time, you know, I ain't gonna say when, but he gonna run around stage after I got out the hospital. He gonna run around the stage. They didn't, they didn't kill the firstborn. They didn't kill the firstborn. Then he talking about, where my money? Where my money? We ain't come to raise the dead. God damn, man, if that's the way you feel and God come as a resurrection and a rap show for a rapture and you jealous and envious and then talking about Jesus this and Jesus that and murdered him and, and talking about, uh, and God said, I know they gonna reverence my son. Then they turn around. Instead of reverencing him that way, they turn around and say, you know, just like Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, the son of man got to be beat and scorned and crucified and hung up on the cross. When that scripture could have easily been, you know, uh, Moses, just like Moses hung, the, hung up the serpent in the wilderness, the Son of Man must be honored and reverenced. That's the way it should have been because he should have been honored and reverenced. You know what I'm saying? Glorified. Not no beat and murdered. You know what I'm saying? And lied and said God had something to do with it. And when he strike, he gonna get y'all something for it. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. Man, my belief is not y'all's belief. And then I'm God. And I know I'm God. I come with it inheritance. And y'all still got price tags on food. After I told you the food didn't want to have price tags on it. If the food don't want to have price tags, don't you think y'all getting cursed every time you sell the shit? For some of you guys, you're thinking a lot about your next moves that you're going to make, where it is that you need to invest your energies next. You could be preparing for some huge event of some sort, something very big. You could be uh, nervous about involving yourself in that big event. Maybe you don't want to give too much up more of your energies or of yourself. You don't like the fact that you may have to... Um, uh, try to blend in with entities that are not like you or who don't think like you, okay? Um, for some of you guys, you could be thinking a lot about the government, all right, or someone involved with the government, uh, maybe nervous or worrying what is going to happen next or preparing um, for if, you know, certain things go wrong with uh, within the government, okay? This could involve this situation. If it's not government, it could involve a leadership role or position, for some of you guys, you have been chosen as a leader or you are a leader in a situation. Um, maybe after a very um, not so good event that may have happened. So you're kind of happy to be a leader or or be of your, your own self, like able to uh, do your own thing. But at the same time, it came in from a situation that wasn't necessarily the best, okay? Uh, for others of you... Um, I feel like this is a, I don't want to say like a warning sign, like as if something bad is going to happen. Um, I just see this as you guys needing to, um, for some of you guys, you need to stop worrying so much about what's going on in the government because it's stressing you unnecessarily and you could be, um, preparing like for things that aren't going to happen that you may accidentally manifest somehow or put yourself on that timeline to experience those things. For others of you, you have to be very careful about the things that you are saying or believing, especially when it's involving the government, all right? You do have the government card here, 
Okay, you have reflecting, activity, or preparing. And, um, yeah, so, um, I feel like for some of you guys, you, within your own right, you're very confident, you're very secure, okay? You're very forward-thinking, forward-moving, but things that may be happening in the government could make you nervous or could make you um, feel like what you have been doing is not going to be worth it or you're waste you may be feeling like you're wasting your time or energy in things that may not um, play out in your favor. Uh, for some of you all, what this is basically saying is that like um, some things that are happening in the government are happening because they're intentionally trying to mislead people and make people feel uh, like they don't have power. Like they don't have the ability to um, make their life what they want it to want the, want their life to be. Like as if they see this is what it is. Me and you, me and you, we know that the government is foul. You know what I'm saying? But we can't we can't go totally against the government because we got half of our ancestors in the government that's helping us. You know, you got us G's and us G's and us G's. And some of us G's enemies. But we still us G. But then we are fading out of the enemies that's us G's. Because purity and love can't stand hate, can't stand stealing, killing, and destroying. And ain't going to let money come up for air to breathe no more. We got to take the life out of money. We don't want to take the life out of men and women and children. We want to take the life out of money. Money, you know, I heard one rapper say he could pay somebody. One of y'all up-to-date rappers said he could pay somebody $4,000 to kill him and his girl. And I heard that right there on the internet. That he can pay somebody $4,000 to take a man out and his girl. You know what I'm saying? So, money is what you got to get rid of. You got to make it holy. You got to purify it. If you're going to play with it, because it ain't nothing real. But they made a beast out of it, made you worship it, made you call it Jesus, and made you bring tithes and offerings to them when Jesus clearly taught against tithes and offerings. That's another thing. Like government, 501c3, they won't let me in none of that. I can't even get an EIN number to get a business account because the IRS, uh, my, my social security number, is not a social security now my social security tied up in a whole bunch of lies from dow chemical all they lawyers my ex-wife and all the bullshit she pulled you know what i'm saying all the lies and the people she had working with her to spread lies and rumors and all that shit about how i'm crazy but the, you know me being different you know coming from Ad to being god and adam you know what i'm saying you know, gave her a kind of lead way because most people don't believe in God and don't think God real anyway. They don't believe in the miracles. They ain't never seen a motherfucker get an arm and that didn't have now. They ain't never got in a truck and cranked it up and it wouldn't start for five hours. They ain't never seen a knee that didn't have a stopping point and then prayed over it and God fixed it in 30 minutes. You know what I'm saying? They ain't never seen that. You know what I'm saying? So they don't know miracles to see God is a miracle to come see God in the mirror. You know what I'm saying? They don't know that. But then they'll sit up and judge God, take all his money, and then tell him he got $13 at the, in three, four days. I the hell, $2,500, $13. Y'all keep that shit. You know what I'm saying? Keep that shit. Let us have the 25, 
$23 million up front and the $6,000 a week I promise every man, woman, and child. This God and this ain't no man talking to you. And I ain't playing with you. Shit, I'm walking to the bank tomorrow. If it's two, three miles, I'm walking. And I'm getting my shit. Because I ain't sitting up here playing. I don't need no EIN number, tax number, nothing to do with taxes. When I'm God and I'm Adam and every one of these children in my garden that's alive today is a seed from me. I'm the A-T-O-M to the A-D-A-M. Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end. First and the last. God Almighty, Adam Latroy Jack. That's me. They are consistently and constantly dominated or controlled and have no way out of um, these situations that are going on when it's just not true. All right? But I do see a lot of positive energy coming into your life. And like I said, um, what I see here is if there were negative situations or people trying to put negativity onto you or trying to drag you down out of a high vibrational realm because they simply just don't like to see you happy or they don't like to see you in a better light or they have some sort of pre uh disposition or or prejudice against you so you're not fitting that prejudice and it pissed them off and that's why they try to do things to make you fit into that prejudice possibly because they may have talked shit about you to other people or they may have done things to try to make you look bad and if you don't fit into what they like try to make you seem like they essentially try to create scenarios or create situations that would make you fit into that and i feel like you knew that or you know that and that could be that's what i'm talking about me already taking trips to florida running from god running from myself you know and this and that i kind of play into their hands you know what i'm saying when I turned into God, you know everybody in their mama government and everybody going to turn against whoever say they God and whoever say they Jesus and all that. So that was already in the church already was about trying to sacrifice Adam, you know what I'm saying? And then Dow Chemical had already sacrificed him to get two stars, you know what I'm saying, and OSHA from Adam, you know what I'm saying? Because Adam, the one built the motherfucking plant. Be also what you are thinking a lot about. Try not to allow that person's actions or those things that that person or people were doing to limit you or to um, steal your positive energy. I feel like throughout all this, though, one of the things that were very beneficial for you is that you stayed positive. Is that you didn't allow this other person's or this other situation's negativity to get the best of you. Okay, uh, for some of you guys, you and this person or this situation, you have different political uh, uh, views. Or you know why it don't bother me? And we do have different political views. But you know why it don't bother me? Because I know they can't know the truth. Because ain't but one God. Ain't but one shepherd. Ain't but one, you know, gate to heaven. Ain't but one door. And that's Adam. The first son of God. The A-T-O-M, the A-D-A-M, the one Jesus said, Holy Father, keep them through your name so that they may be one as we are. He said, because they going to hate you because they hated me first. So, as Adam, hiding all y'all that was in Christ, Coming for all them that are Christ. I had to hide y'all. I was breathing for y'all. I was your breath of life. I was everything it is to be. The A-T-O-M. Not Jesus. But the A-T-O-M. That Jesus prayed to. That sent Jesus. And said I know they gonna reverence my son. Theologies for some of you guys, you could be thinking a lot about politics. 
some of you guys may be wanting to get involved with politics. Maybe you realize that somebody who you were talking to or associating with has different uh, political ideologies than you. And it could have kind of messed up the relationship or the situation with you. And maybe that could be why you uh, felt, maybe you felt a little bit, um, not necessarily hopeless, but maybe you felt like things would not change with that person. Like you weren't able to get them to see things from your perspective or they're not open to new um, ideas. All right. Uh, for others of you, I see that there's going to be a lot of positive things happening, especially involving uh, government and politics very soon here. Okay, um, I feel like you're definitely doing a lot to take care of what you need to take care of. You're being very uh, responsible. Okay, this is very powerful. This is going to bring a lot of happiness into your life. Um, I feel like a lot of you guys are going to start to see things happening in the government. That's going to make you very happy, very pleased. Okay, um, maybe things that were bad will start to turn around and become uh, correct. Maybe even... If you had a prophecy of some sort, it's going to come true, okay? Um, for some of you guys, there's something significant about an invention of some sort, all right? Um, maybe you purchased something new that was like a new invention, or you're trying to invent something. For others of you, if you're creating something new, creating a product of some sort, okay, it is going to be very successful and very powerful. However, you need to understand and know that even if the first few times that you uh, created or put it out there, if it fails, that doesn't mean that it's not worth it. That simply means that you need to um, uh, go about it in a different way or, uh, you know, go to the drawing board and really see what it was that wasn't successful instead of being afraid or jumping to conclusions that it's not beneficial or not worth your time. All right. You know, you so helpful. You so helpful, sweetheart. God, dog. Now, God needed to hear that. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what I do every single day. When shit don't work the way I know I spoke it, I just reword it and, you know, know that God going to speak those things that be not as though they were. Like my son, you know what I'm saying? You know, I spend you know, like 12 to 24 hours, you know, 16 to 24 hours, 24 hours written, sitting here in the throne, you know, I call any chair my throne, you know what I'm saying? So I sit here in the throne, you know what I'm saying? And I don't really pray, you know what I'm saying? I just, you know, write quotes and poems and you know, basic instructions before leaving Earth. I write them. You know what I'm saying? Basic instructions before leaving Earth. That's what I write. That's the stuff that I'm teaching y'all. You know what I'm saying? Because you got to go from the earthly realm, the, the carnal mind frame, and then you got to go to the heavenly mind frame. The holy, the holy ghost. You got to be a ghost. You know, I know you got flesh and all that there, but you got to believe in the unseen. You got to believe that things are happen by you just saying, I wish it'll happen. You know what I'm saying? See, me teaching, now I'm teaching my granddaughter, and she ain't but a month old, and I'm teaching her right now. She gave me the biggest smile the other day, so I know that she learning from me. She she hear my voice. She know my voice. When I call her baby sister, when I say baby sister, when I say baby sister, you know what I'm saying? She look at me and just smile with that big old smile she got. You know what I'm saying? I say, man, now that's something. She only a month old, smiling at me like that. She know where she at now. She know who she got. She know the voice of God. And she know that's pop pop. She know that's paw pop. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I don't I don't I don't get mad about stuff. I just know I'm and I thank you, sweetheart, for telling me that, assuring me. If it don't work the first time, don't think that it ain't gonna work. Try it again. You know, you so helpful with that. You just brought it in so smooth like God would.
Okay, I do see a lot of self-empowerment going on in your life. Um, I feel like you're not entertaining like political conversations or political ideologies that make you feel unempowered, unmotivated, uninspired. Okay, um, a lot of the actions you've been taking recently, especially if they're involving self-empowerment and self-improvement, are very powerful and very successful for you. And if you don't see it now, you will see in the near future that this is going to bring you a lot of happiness, a lot of success, um, a lot of content within yourself, okay? You know, what you saying right there is my teaching. You know what I'm saying? And God, forgive me if, if you know, I'm offending anybody with my teaching. But what you talking about there, that I'm going to see some good come out of it and you know, we're going to be real happy and cherish the moments of it is the teaching that we doing and the teaching of the born again children that's bringing these dead ancestors, resurrecting them and bringing them back to life. The rapture. It's already started. Little bit is Mama Lucy, Uncle Peck, you know what I'm saying, Papa Enoch. Need B. Brown, Charlie Brown, you know what I'm saying, Jesse, Edmund, Williams, you know what I'm saying, my pawpaw, my grandfather, and my great-grandfather, grandfather, and daddy is Jesse, Edmund, Williams, you know what I'm saying, if you start from the top, but they named my daddy Edmund Jesse Williams. EJW, but it's really JEW, you know what I'm saying? And his brother James called Jesus Christ, you know what I'm saying? I always set my people up to do good. And you right, sweetheart. One day we're going to see it in the near future. All this stuff going to be some good teaching. Some good, wholesome, loving, you know, we're going to all cherish the teaching that Adam doing now. Oh, it might hurt us now, and it might losing money and losing businesses and this and that might hurt a few people, but when we gain all that stuff back, and ain't nobody paying nothing, and heaven is taking all the charges and all that, we charging everything to God in heaven, then, you know, ain't nobody getting money and paying people to kill nobody and steal from nobody and you ain't got to steal the money if it's already yours. If you give a man millions of dollars, what the fuck he going to steal for? That's why people don't want to accept it because they still want to be fucking devils and still kill and destroy. They don't want to be good. That's the problem. That's why they don't want the money because it takes all their power away from what they could do against people and offend people and kill, steal, and destroy with the money. That's why I take the money away for good this time. Um, For some of you guys, you have a call here. If you haven't written in your journal in a while, you need to write in your journal, okay, to get some of that, that uh, those extra worries or thoughts off of your mind, all right? And she write about that too. I need to I'm gonna clarify this a little bit more. Stuff, you know, and I also what I'm hearing here too is um if this is not like government or politics, like what I'm hearing here too is like um someone wants you to like do things in a certain way or think things in a certain way or follow by some sort of like um societal norms or way of being and I feel like for some of you guys you you so say humbled yourself or um, put, uh, express yourself in a way that was more like everybody else, but you were able to only do it for so long, right? Because you're not fake, so you're not going to act like something that you're not, but you can only hold certain things back for so long. And I feel like... You know, that's like uh, when I first started, me asking people for tithes and offerings. I knew that was wrong, but I was trying to, you know getting my business started, you know what I'm saying, teaching the Word of God, and I was still going to correct the, the Bible, you know what I'm saying, that's what my job is, is to correct it, 
you know, and make things go right. I seen that the world wasn't going right, so I had to come and fix it. That's my job. And for y'all breathing and heart beating and loving y'all to make the blood warm, you know what I'm saying, all that stuff. But what I'm trying to say is, you know, that's what I come for. And I had to humble myself to be like them. And I had to, you know, I had to say I was in the name of Jesus, but that's the far as I would go with that. Because I'm not into, you know, Christ and him crucified. I don't want to know how y'all murdered him. And lying, saying God had something to do with it. It pleased me to bruise him. And with each strike we healed and 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 he was smitten by God. Man, uh, no, man. And lying about the transgressions and stuff, knowing it was because they was transgressors, not uh, for their transgressions. Why would Jesus take something for their transgression? Why would he take something or die for the ungodly judging and accusing sinner when they were supposed to reverence him? Why would God jump on the side of T.D. Jakes and them and kill Jesus. You know what I'm saying? That that don't sound real to me. Like for some of you guys, someone is mad because you, you know didn't play saying? into their games or you didn't play into some sort of like uh, pecking order or something. It's almost like somebody wanted you to be their bitch or like want to treat you like yeah, that's like the way they you're just some fucking dog or or you're you yeah. don't have your own mind or you're not supposed to think for yourself and they were pissed off because you empowered yourself and also that could be why this person anyway. could have been very uh bothered or upset with you to a point to where they wanted to throw spells onto you because you did not play into some game that they had set up for you and because you didn't play into their game this actually made you very successful. This is bringing an abundance of happiness and success and good things into your life from the universe. Yeah, I feel like this was like a power struggle of some sort. Whether this be with the government and like, you know, regular average society or whether this be you and some other group of people or a person, there was like a power struggle. And this person that you're dealing with, they're uh, mentally deranged, okay? It says someone is mentally deranged. Yeah, mentally deranged. That's that lady that's out there, you know, posing as a wife of God, you know what I'm saying? A ex-wife of God when she was married, when I met her. And she never did get no divorce to marry me. So that was a bogus marriage anyway. And then I divorced in 2009. As soon as I said, he ain't never been up here with us. My boss ran up to me and said, God, out of all the motherfucking places, sorry for cussing, but that's the way he said it. God, out of all the motherfucking places you could have came to, you had to come to the earth. And then my other general foreman, he was a uh, superintendent at the time, he gonna run up to me earnest, and he told me my wife wasn't nothing but a whore and she was sleeping with this dude and this dude. Then I asked another dude, you sleeping with my wife? And he said, you need to ask your daughter-in-law. And she was working with us at that time. It was like all the set up that whole day. You know what I'm saying? And then after that, I knew that I was God, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I just started working for God, you know what I'm saying? I kept welding for many years, but then 2015, God told me, go on, on, leave the plant, man. They just against us. They just devils now. They pure devils now. They done brought us down from $38 an hour, thirty eight fifty, you know, and took our double time years before that and then you know brought us down to 2250 but like right now going from four thousand dollars a week to twenty five hundred dollars a month 
and paying somebody to take it. You know what I'm saying? Paying somebody to steal it from me. So, you know, man, I'm doing real stupid shit right now. And that stupid shit is following instructions from stupid people that work for the devil. Anybody who's stopping me from getting what I want ain't nothing but a devil. Ain't nothing but a devil. But what's crazy is one of the things that they try to say about you or make people think about you is that you're the one that's actually mentally deranged, okay? Because of the things that That's you what I'm saying. She tried to lie. She, when I got that Social Security, you know, you got to fill it out and fill out what's wrong with you. Well, I feel I like was wrong with me, but it, the only thing that was wrong with me, I was fainting, passing out sometimes, and then I didn't want to faint on the job going up a ladder, you know, real high up and faint and kill myself. That's why I wanted off. And plus, I was God, and I was working with that, but I was dealing with that. But I was showing my CD and letting the doctor, I mean, letting the lawyer hear my CD to really judge me by what word I spoke on that CD, the last Adam and Exodus. That's why I took all the businesses and, and all the IRS revenue and all the businesses, Dow and Phillips and all them. That's why I just cleaned up and took everybody's business from them. You know what I'm saying? Because Adam. Y'all stole all Adam's life, and that was God's life. You know what I'm saying? So I just, just like you stole the motorcycle, you stole two motorcycles and didn't even give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? That's how deranged that lady was. She was a thief and a devil and didn't give a fuck and still don't give a fuck. She a devil in right now. She believed, but, but the thing is, what you said or what you expressed was actually the truth. This person is living a lie. They don't want to let go of that lie. Like I said, either they misrepresented you or they made you seem like somebody yes, that you're you not. Or you just have different political like ideologies, with, different ways of seeing life. And Adam's the way that you see like life that, is more to close to the truth. Okay, no, but this person can't family. handle the truth. Didn't so when you would express like the no truth to them, they her. believe in some yeah. like pre-arranged or pre-programmed lie, essentially. And so um, I feel like with some of you guys, this person would express like what their what their beliefs were or or how they saw things, but then you would ask them why, or you would like try to engage with them to understand more of how they felt, and they didn't like that. They felt like you were just supposed to accept what the fuck they were saying or how they believe and not question it, right? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> what the yeah, fuck? Yeah, so because yeah. you're questioning yeah, or you're giving your own thoughts and opinions. And they're different from the norm or different from whatever it is that this group or this situation believes or wants people to believe. They try to say that you're mentally deranged. And you know what's real crazy is um, this person is going to be put or these people are going to be put into situations where people actually treat them the way that they treated you. They're going to yeah, actually look mentally deranged. Like, people are going to realize. Yeah, because after she lied to so many people and told them I'm so crazy and this and that, now the shit that is going back on her, all them people she worked with and shit like that, got to look upside her head and see me being a real God that I was from the day she met me, the day her church sicked her on me. And that was the devil from the goddamn church. You know what I'm saying? The devil in Miss Jones. You know what I'm saying? You might as well call her the devil in Miss Jones. That's all I had. A devil in Miss Jones. That's all I had. Realize how Dirty crazy this am. person really you is. It's something That's like maybe they're going to express or explain why they don't like something that you said or something that you did. But in the way that they express it or explain it, it makes no logical sense. And it sounds like overly emotional. And they even like lied and, and, and like added things into the situation that never happened kind of thing. Wow. All right. Wow. 
So you have a piece of wisdom here, okay, from Sandra and Taylor, and I feel like you're reflecting a lot, like I said, on where you want to head next, where you want to invest your energies into next, okay? Um, just remember, pursue your goals because you want them to enhance an already happy life, not because you'll be miserable without them. Because the thing is, that's, that's a quote by Sandra and Taylor, and what I have to say to that is the thing is, if you are trying to pursue your goals um, because you feel like you'll be miserable without them, if they don't work out, you will be miserable, right? You will be upset and bothered. But if you pursue your goals as though they're going to benefit your life or they're extras, right? You don't have to do them kind of thing, even if it may be true that you do need them, okay? The way that you respond to what happens will be a lot better. It will be a lot more um, beneficial for you, okay? And it will be less miserable, less unempowering, etc. Wow. So whatever actions you've been taking, like I said, you passed some sort of test that the universe was giving you or God, etc. And because of this, you're about to be blessed tremendously with an abundance of financial wealth. Okay, you do have a card here that says financial and material abundance is on its way. Okay, so if you feel like your actions were in vain or you wasted your time, wasted your energy, wasted your money, etc., don't like she said, don't worry about it. Don't think y'all wait. If you spend any money on God, Adam Jackson, you ain't waste your money, you ain't waste no time or nothing. Man, actually. What I'm giving you is more than $23 million and $6,000 a week. The reason being is because I said all your money going to do is add, multiply, and never subtract. And divide and never subtract. So if God get charged for everything and God charge heaven for everything, in heaven take the bill and pay for everything do that sound logical banks that god need to foot the bill because all the rest of us are thieves and murderers and killers out here that don't give a fuck about it. nothing ain't got no manners and can't say you sorry don't even think that what repent means. you got creflo dollar teaching that it don't mean apologize <laughs> Shit. So, if if God ain't did shit, Creflo Dollar, when you sit up there and say God did this and God did, God ain't did shit. You know what I'm saying? God did shit, but then it wasn't you, Creflo Dollar. It wasn't y'all. It wasn't y'all. Cause I ain't had no help since I started. Now I ain't gonna say that from the gods now. But then other than the God, people that I should have knew I should have got help from, I ain't get help from. But the people that I didn't depend on helping me. The people that love me helping me. The people that hate me, envy me, jealous of me, sabotaging me. You know, stabbing me in my back like T.D. Jason. But then the people that love me, that really love God, they getting blessed because they blessing God. But if you're an enemy of God, man, I don't know what to tell you. You know what I'm saying? If you don't like Adam for some reason, I don't know what to tell you. You know what I'm saying? Because, shit, that's what heaven made of. Think that way, okay? Because uh, you're about to... <laughs> Either you're going to get a pay raise, okay, you're going to be promoted. If you're an entrepreneur, some you're going to get like an influx of customers or people who want to donate to you or people who want to um, will do business with you and in doing so, you'll make a lot more money, um, etc. All right, maybe you'll start to finish, uh, if you create products, you're going to start to finish those products and be able to get them out on the market to make more money. Things will definitely start to flow for you in your life, all right? That's what I'm trying to get on the market. What I'm, what I'm trying to get on the market, sweetheart, is money. 
I'm trying to get y'all them millions and millions and millions of dollars because I'm giving y'all the money as the sands of the sea and the stars in the sky. You know what I'm saying? One tarot card reader was uh, bragging on she saw one shooting star. She was bragging on that. And I ain't got it. I ain't, it didn't mean nothing to me. Now, some people I ain't never seen now, so I'm not judging her. But one night, me and my daughter was fishing, and we seen like 89 or, or you know, 86 to 90 something, uh, 96, uh, 86 to 96 uh, falling stars, shooting stars. We seen like 86 to 96, because she counted like 48, and I counted like. 49 or, or 50. We was way up there, count, just counting stars, man, falling. They was just falling. Then I told her the other night, I said, I bet you that was just before I had screamed out and said, he ain't never been up here with us. And I remember saying that, and I remember Obama's voice saying it with me. I remember being in the truck and Obama talking to me, you know what I'm saying, when I used to just talk on that tape recorder, you know what I'm saying, that uh, voice recorder, you know what I'm saying, just doing audios, and I was stopping traffic, and all at that then, you know what I'm saying, shit, man, I have seen so many things, and did so many things, you know, God showed me stuff, that, you know, if you see it, you wouldn't believe it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember it was a plane, like a 747, and it was just hovering over the airport. It was like it was coming into the airport, but it was coming in too low and too fast, and it was just like it was parked in the air it was like a big ass 747 parked in the air and me and my kids rolled past it from the back looking at it parked in the air rolled past it then kept looking at it from the back my kids included me and my kids seen it but the kids was young then they probably don't remember now or they do but we were looking back at it and i was looking in the mirror and it was still hanging in the sky, just parked in the sky, right above the airport landing strip. And it was too big to land at that airport anyway, I think. And then, you know, we just passed it up and got out of sight, and it was still sitting there. Then one time I was taking my kids to, to halfway to their mama, and uh, a car, flipped over on the on the hood and it was smushed and I know the people in there was probably dead or if they didn't die they was in bad shape because it smushed the top of the car down and the whole weight of the top of the bottom of the car was all down there on that you know what I'm saying so but it flipped upside down and slid past me and my kids we was all stopped in traffic and I don't know how that car picked up that much speed to flip over and, you know, uh, go past us. Because it could have it, it could have easily hit us from the back, but it passed us up right in the middle in the groove of the road. It just missed all them cars and then stopped on its own. You know what I'm saying? It could have killed us, but then it didn't. You know, then one time we, I was on the way home with the kids, and uh, we was on the way home, and this girl, this black girl, was going back to uh, college, to Sam Houston State, and we was behind her, and we was leaving Madisonville, and we was on the highway doing pretty good, you know what I'm saying, about 75, you know, 70 miles an hour. All of a sudden, that girl went, Zoom and zoom and flipped over a whole bunch of times 
in the ditch. You know what I'm saying? So I went over there and ran down there where she was. And uh, she was dazed all up. But then, you know, I waited and got her phone and called, you know, her mom and them. She showed me the number and I had to get to her mom and them on the phone. So me and the people that was there called her, her mom and them, told them where she was. And we called the ambulance first. We called the ambulance and then we called her mom and them, told her mom and them to come. But I got on the road because, you know, I ain't want to stick around. But it was enough people that stayed there. They didn't need my witness. But I did. I was the first one seeing them. Cause she went in front of me and then darted over and went in there. But I stayed, you know, till, you know, I got the ambulance coming in and her mama and them on the way, you know what I'm saying? And it was about, shit, 10 people there. And I just told them I was gone, you know what I'm saying? I ain't want to wait on the police because I had tickets probably. And when I have tickets, I try to stay out of the way of police. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but uh, yeah, man. Staying motivated is very uh significant for you during this time period. Find ways to stay motivated. Don't watch things that are gonna overly make you uh scared and fear etc because some entities that is their goal is to make you fear unnecessarily certain things to, to then get you to act in certain ways whether it be to purchase items or make certain moves that benefit them okay that don't really benefit you in the end all right there's something here if you guys were looking for a loan or trying to find a way to like get money there's some kind of money that's going to be coming into your life okay um also uh try to avoid talking about politics too much with people because some people just they're even if they may try to say that they're open-minded a lot of them really aren't okay so sometimes you know when you're realizing that somebody is just not understanding or not getting it or doesn't want to the best thing to do is just kind of drop that situation, especially if it's with family or friends who you love dearly and you don't want to mess up your entire relationship with them off of a political conversation. And I know that's crazy and stupid, and some people may even feel like, well, what's the point of having somebody like that around you uh, if they can't even handle a political discussion? Well, in this day and age, it's best to have as many people on our side as possible, even if they don't agree with us politically speaking, especially because if things start to collapse with the government society, you're going to want to try, okay? And a lot of times, just because somebody doesn't agree with you politically speaking doesn't mean that they don't value you in other areas. So be really careful about how much you're talking about politics with people, how much you are... Um... No, what you're saying is be careful talking about politics because a lot of our government is on God's side. That's all I'm going to say. A lot of love is on God's side. A lot of love is in the government. You know what I'm saying? That's why we still here and we still got food in the stores and we still going. They know I'm here. They know God here. You know what I'm saying? And they know what I stand for and they know what I didn't Put out, they know everything I done talk, and they know everything, everybody that's being saved, they know, and the entities know, the spirits know, the spirits know Satan ain't nothing but a skeleton now, a lot of gossip that don't nobody want to hear, because they know it's all lies, most people that's getting talked about now is all lies. And now they looking at the people who lied on them as liars. They don't even want to be at their job no more. Because everybody looking at them like they're a damn liar. And a hoe and all kinds of shit. You know what I'm saying? They looking at them for what they really is. You know what I'm saying? Everybody work for Satan getting looked at the way you really is. And the fact that God can't get no truck out of y'all or a house, you know what I'm saying? But then we 
we keep things going. Like I say, ascended masters got to keep pressure on us so we can get the job done. You know what I'm saying? If we don't get the job done, then we wasted our time. We already messed up the resurrection and the rapture. We already messed it up. So like she say, be careful when you talk about the government because a lot of the gods, the gods that truly love us are with the government, the, the true government. You know, now some people ain't, but a lot of us is. Um, allowing that to dictate whether or not you're going to be involved with somebody or have them as a friend. Some people you just have to understand they have different political uh, perspectives so you just don't talk about those things with them and you keep them at a distance especially if it's way different po political ideologies. Like you're the type of person that doesn't agree with um, taking the life of your, your unborn child versus somebody who does. Okay. Um, there are times though where you can kind of you know like like stuff like that I take it like this you know you I put it like this you you can't do nothing when somebody else got their mind set on something you know I, I had to participate on you know uh, taking the life of a child one time twice you know what I'm saying so I'm not going to say the times that I did, and it wasn't just me and my uh, son or daughter or uh, seed. You know, it could have been a family member of mine, one of my kids. But anyway, I, I took part in it, you know what I'm saying, because they needed it or wanted it. And I didn't see why they needed it keep it if they was going to be fussing and fighting all of that damn time. And that's all they did. So, you know, they already had two babies. So if they had that third one, they already fighting and fussing and fighting all the time. What they going to do with a third one? You know what I'm saying? So that was the situation we had to think about. You know what I'm saying? As a family. And, you know, whatever she or he or whoever it was needed, I let them do what they needed. Gave them what they needed to do it. If they did or if they didn't do it, leave that up to them. Because as God, you know what I'm saying, I let people have their own will. And something like that, I can't Say that baby mad. I'm looking at that baby now and baby sister. That could be baby sister or that could be Jada. You know what I'm saying? That baby there. You know what I'm saying? Could be baby sister. Just went from one auntie to the other sister or mama. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's the way I feel about that. You know, the baby's going to come back because, you know, you abort one or miscarried one and it was meant to be your child. It's coming back. But it might be your auntie's child or your sister's child or your brother's child. But the child you lose going to get another life. Because when a child loses a life, I can't judge no child, and I never judge no child, and I never judge no child before life, uh, past life. I don't judge that. Future is what I deal with. Future, what you gonna be in the future, and I know what you gonna be in the future by living with you in the past, dealing with your past. I know what your future gonna be. I know, you know what I'm saying? Some people might not think so, because everybody thinks, you know, only God know this, only God know that, but if you God, you know. Just by talking to people who they is, what they is, and what they about. Tell, like, a person's personality. 
based off of their po political ideologies and whether or not they would support you or have your back. So there is a fine line there, but discernment is uh, definitely needed, okay? But um, if you're worried about money, you are about to um, make a lot of money, all right? For some of you guys, you have a lot of ideas. You're very optimistic. Um, you you want to either get a new job or you're uh, excited about becoming an entrepreneur and you're not really sure where you're going to get the money from to do it, okay? Don't worry about that, all right? As long as you just meditate and know that the universe is going to provide for you and you do that as often as you can without a scared uh, feeling, you will have more uh, more ability to attract random. Just know that you got God out here and he giving y'all dollars, zillions and zillions of dollars, as many as the sands of the sea and the stars up in the sky. You know what I'm saying? Just remember that. And um, uh, ways to bring, make money or bring money into your life. So it's very powerful for you during this time period to be very careful. If you're moving, be very meticulous about... Um, researching in the into the areas that you're moving into okay um you have this card here that says city and suburbs it says being selective about communities you live in or engage with often evaluate how your community may inspire or hinder you blessings from creating beneficial community very busy or on the go a lot so for some of you guys i feel like you're trying to find ways to bond with your community more for others of you that may be beneficial for you to do so, even if you feel like you're the odd one out, etc. Because, again, in these time periods where, you know, things are just up in the air and random, it's very beneficial to know how the people in your community think, uh, what, what what ways can they provide or help you. Let's say, like, um, you know, one person is, is an auto mechanic, right? You know, one person knows how to do woodworking. One person is growing garden, you know, food, things of that nature. It's very, very beneficial to really know what's going on in your community and to try your hardest to um, uh, make a, have a relationship of some sort with these people, even if they're different than you, okay? Um, but for those, again, who are moving, be real careful about what, what uh, towns or cities or homes you're moving into next. For some of you guys, you could want like a beautiful home and you want that home so much that you haven't really taken the time to look into the area around that home or the type of people or the type of schools, maybe for your children, you know, just things of that nature. It's something about your community and really looking at um, whether or not this new community that you're moving into is going to be beneficial for you. A community doesn't necessarily have to be where you live either. It could be a new job, a new uh, group, a new um, club, you know, maybe you're going to a new school, etc., etc., all right? Okay. So if somebody has a, a lot of attraction towards you, uh, that could be either like romantic attraction or that could be just somebody really likes your personality, your style, okay? They really think that um, you're the one for them or they value you or um, they want to have like a, a relationship with you, whether that be a romantic relationship or a friendship, partnership, etc., all right? Oh, wow. So for some of you guys, I feel like you started to learn how to allow yourself to be happy. Um, and you may have to do things different than you normally would in order to make this possible. For others of you, this is a, uh, a uh, huge like motivation for you to allow yourself to be happy. All right. Especially. OK, so like I get if you're producing something or creating something, try not to be overly analytical about how it's going to turn out or when. When to release, you know, those those types of things that 
make the process of creation not fun. Try to have fun and be happy in your process of creation, okay? And try not to be overly perfectionistic to the point to where you stop yourself from putting your products or your creations out to the public or to where you stop yourself from loving your, your creation, okay? For others of you, what this means is um, if you're afraid of being happy with someone because they almost seem too good to be true, just protect yourself and, and, you know, be aware that they could, you know, abandon you, leave you, or things could go wrong. But it, it's time for you to take that risk and allow yourself to be happy with that person. Okay? If you're afraid of opening up to them, just don't open up too much. You, you know, don't say things go, I, that you will regret it, it, later saying if they... It's, 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 it don't pertain to me no more. But that was a good one, uh... That was a good one, Rachel. That's Rachel Fulton.